A lot of people are talking about how in March, the Ripple case finally concludes. But this is happening at the same time frame, so to speak, guys. This is weird. Canada has put out guidance to all Canadian exchanges to delist stablecoins by March 23, 2023. Keep in mind, the World Bank considers XRP and XLM cross-border stablecoins. What? Crypto exchanges have 30 days to register with Canadian regulators, right? Interesting. We already know stablecoins. There's a lot of stablecoins that are very fishy, guys, to say the least. The Canadian agency is asking exchanges that will defy the new policies to stop serving customers in the country. Then exchanges must commit to the practice known as segregation in crypto custody and maintain a chief compliance officer under the new rules. They also must adhere to the elimination of leverage trading and halting the sale and holding of stablecoins. Guys, a crackdown is happening as we speak, right? All around the world. This is interesting. What's happening? Wow, look at that. Leverage trading has to go. Mm, right, which means one thing, that the markets will, will be less volatile than it is right now, right? Because there's so much leverage traders or there's so many leverage trading happening at this point in time, guys, right? Central bank digital currencies for cross-border payments, then stable coins for cross-border payments, XRP and XLM. Isn't that something, right? You know why this is so crazy? Because we just talked about it. How possibly what? Removing access to the native asset by retail, which would then connect to XRP. Isn't that weird? Remember that the Ripple CEOs have always been clear. Ripple has never been retail facing. Sacrifices may need to be made, right? For retail and XRP. Again, the they, uh, Canadian exchanges are what? Delisting stable coins by March 22, 23, 2023. That is so interesting, isn't it? Maybe a connection. I don't know. I did want to point out that's happening in March. Guess what else is happening in March? The future is here, scheduled for standards, as you guys can see, release 2023. Basically, as traffic for cross border and corresponding banking will move from Swift MTs to ISO starting March 2023 till November 2025. There you guys go. They gave us the timeline a long time ago, right? You don't even look, you need to look at riddles, guys. It's all in plain sight. Will XRP moon here in March? Probably not, guys. Maybe they're going to take in steps. And plus, there's a Ripple case on a uh, Ripple lawsuit ongoing, right? So that first needs to conclude, first of all. Then we have seen it before that banks and whatnot will go live. So let's prepare. Not financial advice. But here we go from Bitcoin Magazine. Justin, SEC chair confirms everything other than uh, everything other than Bitcoin is a security. Wow. Right, Gary Gensler, your time is not coming. Why? Because there are so many people that are pissed at Gary Gensler, guys, right? At one point in time, he stated, you could use blockchain, but you need a bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value that's backed by the US dollar or the euro. Or it is, or it could be a currency like Ripple has an alternative, right? Wow. And, and one more thing, his Bitcoin bags must be huge. Gary Gensler is living his very last days of being a SEC chairman. Investigations will come soon. There you guys go. Do we see what's happening, guys? Right? Do we see what's taking place? A lot of attacks against who? Gary Gensler recently. Before we talk about this article from Max Kaiser, Gensler is right. Everything, everything not Bitcoin is a security, right? And then he's saying that El Salvador has a has a first mover advantage. If you go back here to Johnny Deason tweet, when you quote Gensler, you immediately lose the argument. The underlying tech tokens are not securities per se. Any asset can be packaged, market, marketed, offered, and sold as a security. It's the circumstances surrounding the offer and sale of an asset that triggers US securities laws, right? So now, if you check out this article a little bit, can Gary Gensler survive crypto winter? Hmm. Right. Isn't it weird to say that Gary Gensler was meeting with Sam Bankman-Fried for a while, right? 
And and it's so weird because how come Gary Gensler didn't know what was happening with FTX, right? That is so strange, isn't it, guys? The proof is in the damn pudding that these people are just merely puppets to push a certain agenda, right? It was not his. It was not the first time that Gensler met with Bankman-Fried and other FTX representatives, right? There was also a previously disclosed session in late 2021. There you guys go. Think about that, right? So were there any other meetings between the two? No. Ganser quickly responded. Hmm. Again, Ganser is definitely shook, guys. 100% he is, right? He knows his... He definitely knows his time is incoming soon. Why? Because the role, the role of him being... Um, chairman of the SEC, it's it's bye bye soon. Why? Because he's about to fulfill his end goal, right? To go after every asset. That's the thing, guys. And then XRP gets its clarity, right? First in the gates and then first out of, which means XRP is going to is going to be the only safe haven assets out there. Let's think about it, guys. Right? All these institutions will inflow their capital to which asset? He's stating that Bitcoin is good to go, but Bitcoin isn't when the collapse takes place. So what does that tell us? Which other asset is there that are working? That is working with all the other banks, um, institutions, companies around the world, right? XRP. There you guys go, guys. That's where all the capital will flow into, like a what's a tsunami, right? Into what's XRP. Now I will leave. Uh, the links down should also guys can investigate further because this is a long article, guys. Gensler has said that the roadway or runway or runway for crypto firms that are not registered with the SEC is getting shorter, but the metaphor is an odd one. The planes are already in the air, so the agency is really trying to ground them, right? Trying to stop the innovation take place with these cryptocurrencies and whatnot. Again, he went after these other exchanges, which we have just uh, talked about recently. Gensler broadly referred to these kinds of firms, the exchanges, which seem to differ endlessly in their offerings and cor corporate structures as storefronts that are providing services to the public in a way that's commingled and rife with conflicts. Right? Oh, by the way, if there were no exchanges, who will come into the play? Possibly banks, perhaps? Right? The banks know what they're doing, guys. Obviously, this this all points towards a certain outcome, right? The conflicts in these storefronts, Gensler told me, we will not allow in traditional finance. We don't allow in the securities markets. We don't allow in the commercial banking markets. And we don't allow it in crypto because these storefronts are fundamentally and generally non-compliant with the securities laws as we know them. Wow. But let's think about it, guys. It's so weird to me. That we are right now in the year 2023, right? The Howey's test was created when? In the 1900s, guys. There you guys go. The answer is right there. How are they using that test to see if Ripple is good to go or these crypto assets, right? To see if whether something is a security or not. When we have these modern technologies, I don't get it. But you possibly do. This is how we know. This is very strange, if you ask me. That is why possibly a new test is incoming, guys. Upcoming, the ripple test. The ripple test, perhaps. Right. Now, what is interesting is he stated this right here. Basically, perhaps the most telling answer I got from Genser over the course of our discussion was when I asked him to explain the legitimate legitimate use for use case for crypto. Then he stated. He was too careful to draw a sharp distinction between two types of supposed innovations prompted by crypto's earliest advocates. The first is the idea of a distributed accounting ledger, right? Tracking everything down. The blockchain technology that come that came into the world with Bitcoin's innovation. That that is in theory more transparent, accessible, and resilient against a, against theft and cyber attacks than centralized ledgers. Ganser clearly admitted the technical creation. Wow, I think personally that it's very rare that you need that, but it's possible, he said. That's real innovation. The second, of course, is the notion that cryptocurrencies might actually provide a useful store of value or alternative payment mechanism. There you guys go. 
he told us right here, guys. And on that point, Ganser appeared to be much less impressed. Now, if we go down here, basically, I don't think there's much um, economic use for a microcurrency, and we haven't seen one in centuries, right? Most of these tokens will fail because the question is about the eco economics. What's the what's the there there? Most of these cr microcurrencies will fall. Why? Because we America will not give up their status, right? None of these countries will, guys. That's the thing. Basically, here's a simpler way of thinking about if you are an ordin ordinary investor who bought S coins in the recent years, right? Perhaps you should probably prepare, guys. Get out while you can. Interesting. Very fascinating stuff. Let's prepare. But anyways, that's all for you guys. Amazing. See ya.